In patients who are newly diagnosed with HIV infection, what initial management approaches may be appropriate to help minimize the risk of developing thromboembolic complications? I think that that risk, um, again, remains today as it was a few years ago, which is adequate uh, risk factor assessment, looking at the overall patient, uh, the patients for additive risk factors such as presence of dyslipidemia, presence of uh, risk factors for heart disease, uh, previous history of uh, venous thromboembolic disease, uh, et cetera. So I think adequate management at a primary care level of those risk factors is, is very important. As I also mentioned, there's probably no data to support primary prophylaxis with, uh, let's say, aspirin monotherapy uh, for the prevention of cardiovascular events in the HIV-infected patient population. However, strategies for secondary prophylaxis uh, may be good as long as, again, that patient profile fits the uh, uh, other patient profile with an uh, elevated cardiovascular risk. Now, I think on the management side, what we find and what we're finding is that likely the conventional therapy approach, which is a short course of heparin followed by dose-adjusted warfarin, is probably not the best way, in my view, to manage these patients overall. Uh, indeed, one may consider either prolonged course of bridging therapy in this patient population or the potential to use uh, a monotherapy approach with lone liquid heparin, especially in high-risk patients and particularly in patients who failed uh, standard or conventional therapy of warfarin.